Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are taking a look at, well, a series of books. Let me just bring them up. Oh, God. Uh, okay. <laughs> so there was a discussion on, uh, that is actually quite heavy. There was a discussion on Twitter about, um, well, it was about TV programs and films that really creeped you out as a child. And uh, I said about uh, Sapphire and Steel, which is a TV show in the UK, and it still creeps me out now, by the way. I've got the box set. It's a very good series of shows. Uh, but I also remembered uh, this series of, of, well, this part work called The Unexplained. This also really creeped me out as a child. So uh, let's move the box down again. Oh, God. <coughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So this, uh, this was a small part work printed in 1980 and 1982 by Orbis. Now, uh, it was the 1982 one that I picked up when I was uh, young and fresh, seven years old. And as a child, it really did kind of freak me out a lot. Now, there is a whole mix of things, really. Lots of paranormal things. Uh, paranormal and the supernatural. So you can see it's got kind of a whole mixture of stuff here. A lot of UFO stuff. What I have found out from rereading these is if they were kind of running maybe a little bit short on other stuff, they would just increase the amount of UFO stuff because I guess there's always a lot of UFO stuff you can do. So yeah, all kinds of uh, of weird stuff, like this picture of Stonehenge at the top there and uh, rope climbers. And that's something that's Carillion, Carillion photography, something like that, or obviously the, obviously the Loch Ness Monster. So yeah, all kind of things. Lots of UFO stuff, which is... To be fair, some of the least interesting stuff really is it's lots of stories that get told a lot and things that have basically been debunked by now. But yeah, things like the paranormal sixth senses and telepathy. Yeah, abominable snowman. Of course, the abominable snowman. Bigfoot is a, is a big draw. And uh, yeah, things like that. But yeah, it's... um Again, yeah, as a child, this really did freak me out as we can see we see again that a lot of topics get repeated so yeah we have again the the bigfoot issue here also like lots of hypnosis and power of suggestion stuff obviously that's slightly closer to truth oh god yeah this is one that freaks me out and a few people uh on twitter have, have mentioned this as well the spontaneous human combustion stuff yeah that, that that's a freaky one but i'll tell you what this is not the freakiest this is not the freakiest thing for me i will give me a second and i will pick up the, the freakiest thing for me. This will take a while because it's, it's somewhat down the uh, the chain. Yeah, so yeah, quite a way down, number 97. But this is the one that uh, I really remember whenever I think of this part work. And it's because of this one line here, the talking mongoose. Right, so this is about Jeff the talking mongoose. So it's a mongoose, obviously. That's supposed to be that it there. That to me just looks like a furry hat. But hey, uh, so it was apparently a mongoose that would sit in uh, this house, it, hiding away, rarely showing itself, and and could talk, and would just yeah, it would just talk to these people, and it freaked me out, I guess, because the idea of this uh, this tiny animal being in the walls and stuff, and and just talking. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it, it still slightly freaks me out now. I mean, that idea is uh, is a little bit weird, but yeah. Uh, nowadays, they kind of they just assume that the the young girl who whom the mongoose mostly talked to and indeed only talked when she was around was probably just very adept at ventriloquist ventriloquism. She could throw a voice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been lots of uh, lots of people looking at this. It doesn't take away the the basic. Uh, creepiness at all. Yeah, I mean, you kind of see the, again, this is quite a good one because it shows the variation. So this is about the I Ching, which is a way of telling the future uh, Chinese thing. Um, and yeah, spirit uh, seance, uh, seances and things like that. And yeah, mystics. And yeah, it's about the Bible, some of the more esoteric stuff in the Bible. Uh, yeah, scare ships. Yeah, weird ships that used to appear, but that's probably just, yeah. Yeah, so, fascinating. There were, I've got, uh, 
I got this from a eBay auction, by the way. When I remembered it, I decided to buy it, and uh, rather quickly, I bought them, and they arrived. So, yeah, that's a, an interesting turn of, of things. But I've got up to uh, 101 of these now. In total, there were 157, although the 157th was just an index to the rest of them, and not actually a real issue. And they also, and I've got one of them here, which also came in the same auction. Auction. Now these, um, these came with with binders, and you could fit, I think, 10 of them in one binder. I only have one of the binders, and that's because that was the free one. And uh, my grandparents basically decided I was already spending way too much on these nonsense books, and therefore I wasn't going to be allowed to buy uh, extra binders for, I think they were like five quid a shot. And that was quite a lot of money back then. I am quite old. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, there's also these books, which I guess they, they just took out the, the idea of the binders and then just put them into their own bound books. This one, you can see that the, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the, the binding is starting to rust a little bit, but hey, yeah, so these, this is effectively just the first 10 books, or the first 10 part works in one book, which is quite interesting. So yeah. It's, I don't believe in obviously quite a lot of this stuff now. I have grown up and, uh, some of the wonder of the world has been diminished by the general bleakness of life. So yeah, I don't believe in all, uh, as much of this anymore, but it, I kind of miss those times of of wonder where you, you just, some of this stuff was just amazing and, and now you look at it and it all seems quite a bit nonsense really. Which is a shame. Oh, there's another one. Jeff the Talking Mongoose. <laughs> this is the other thing about these books that you kind of find is that a story will just pop up again sometimes with a bit more information occasionally just told in a different way and I think part of it is that maybe some of these stories just needed more space to be told and these are quite thin books they only have uh, 20 pages I think in them hard to tell because it kind of starts the numbering off at one and carries on through the book so uh, what's that E yeah, about 20 pages. Um, so yeah, that's not a lot of space to tell some quite interesting tales. Uh, so they will continue. And then occasionally, I think, again, like the UFO stuff, they just didn't have enough sometimes and decided to just retell the story again. But yeah, things like, oh, that stuff about homeopathy. I'll give you a hint. It doesn't. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. These are really... I mean, they're genuinely, even though, like I say, I, I don't really believe in most of this stuff anymore... It's still genuinely fascinating, and yeah, things like Jeff are still very creepy even now, even though I realise it almost certainly was just a child trying to get attention by uh, practising uh, throwing a voice. It's still very creepy. This, uh, Yeah, it's a creepy idea. <laughs> I should have problems sleeping tonight. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time. Oh God, no, that's the creepiest. What on earth? <laughs>